Hello and welcome to my long exposure photography tips and tricks video. So, do you want to be able to take photographs like this or like this? Well, if so, let's get into it and I'll talk you through it. So what exactly is long exposure photography? What do you need for it? And how do you take the blasting images, Kieran? Well, I'm gonna talk you through every single part of that. But also, and this is the most important thing, at the end of the video, I'm gonna do something kind of cool. I'm gonna talk you through how you can take a long exposure photograph at home with little to no equipment. So firstly, what is long exposure photography? Long exposure photography is basically the same as any other form of photography, only what we want to do is we want to create motion blur. So let's just think of it. If I'm standing here perfectly still and if I start waving my hands around the place, if you took a photograph at one thirtieth of a second or something, my hand is gonna come out blurred because my hand is moving. My body is stationary, so that should come out sharp. So it's, it's kind of an amplified version of that. So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do today. So what do you need to shoot long exposure photographs? Basically what you need to start off on it is a tripod. Now, if you have ND filters, and you might say ND filters, what the heck are ND filter here? filters here? They're neutral density filters. So basically you're looking at something like this. And what they basically are is, they're sunglasses for your camera. So they're blocking the light going into your camera, so it means your camera needs to see the photograph for longer to suck in enough light so it can form a picture. So you can get these in different strengths, which is something I'm gonna get into later on. As we're talking about ND filters, I wanna say a big thank you to Format High Tech. Format High Tech have sponsored my landscape photography and seascape photography now for some time. I absolutely love their filters and they were kind enough to give me a 10% discount code, which I'm gonna pop down below here. So if you are interested in buying filters, I highly rec recommend the Format High Tech filters. The Firecrest Ultra range are absolutely stunning. They're the ones I use all the time. You can use the discount code Haze 10 to get you 10% off worldwide. So there you go, you're saving money now too as well. <laughs> How cool is that? So in this section, I'm gonna talk you through taking long exposure photographs without ND filters. Now, the one thing with this is you can only take these at specific times of the day. So generally just after sunset or around sunset, when the light level drops sufficiently, it's darker, so your camera, you can set your camera up, so you need to take long exposure photographs to get enough light in. The first thing and the most important thing you need to do here is you need to change your camera's ISO setting. Now, if you're standing back kind of going, what I need to do? What, <laughs> Kieran, what the hell is that? ISO is basically just your camera's sensitivity to light. If you don't change the setting, your camera's going to try and help you and it's gonna increase its sensitivity to light, which means you won't be able to take a long exposure photograph even at nighttime. So you need to take that off auto and you need to put your camera on its base or native ISO. So how do you find your base ISO? Basically, you just Google it. Google the camera model and its base ISO, and it's gonna pop up there, and it's gonna tell you what the base ISO is. Set your camera to that. So what do you need to do then, Kieran? Grab your camera, pop it on a tripod, and set your camera to aperture priority. Now, why do you want to set it to aperture priority? You want to set it to aperture priority because there's three parts to the exposure triangle. You have your ISO, which we've already dealt with. Now we're gonna deal with the second one, which is your aperture. And the third one then is your shutter speed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get your aperture and set it to F8 if you're shooting on an APS-C or a crop sensor camera. If you're shooting on a full frame camera, you'll set it to F11. That's going to restrict the amount of light that's coming into the camera. So the camera is gonna to have to see the image for longer in order to be able to take the photograph. Hence, our long exposure photograph, even without ND filters. How cool is that? Okay, so that's the worst part of this done. Now, all we need to do is point our camera at something. Now, what do we choose to point our camera at? Let's say if you're in a cityscape, you'll be looking for car trails or people walking along. So car trails are ideal. You've this nice building in front of you and cars driving backwards and forwards. What you want to do is you want to fire off your shot just as the car is about to come into frame. So you'll get the headlights the front headlights and the rear headlights both forming these light trails running across your image. So a really cool effect there. Now you're out shooting a waterfall or shooting a river, it doesn't really matter because the water in the waterfall is gonna keep falling. And that doesn't switch off at nine o'clock at night or, you know, or speed up or slow down. So if you take your photograph now, or if you wait two seconds or three seconds or four seconds or five seconds, you're gonna get the same shot. So timing isn't critically important there. And it's the same thing with a river. The river is gonna keep flowing. So again, timing isn't very important. 
important there. Where timing comes into it are the likes of seascapes. So if you're shooting a, a two second exposure during a, a, a seascape, it's gonna be incredibly important when you press that shutter button because timing is really key there. So what type of an effect are you going to get shooting long exposures? Well, you can start off with photographs like this. All these photographs are between one to two seconds of an exposure. So the main sea body is intact, it's sharp enough, whereas the fast moving parts of the water are just dragging along beautifully, giving this fantastic motion. We go from that into the likes of these photographs, which are longer, long exposures. They go from anything from 15 seconds up to about two minutes. You can see the clouds are dragging across and the water is just completely soft, especially in this photograph here. And you can see how surreal these images look as a result of that long exposure effect. This is bringing us to the cool part of the video. I'm gonna show you step by step how to take a long exposure photograph at home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the tripod in front here so you can see me taking the photograph and I'm gonna show you, show you the effect then. So as you can see, I have the camera set up directly in front of me. It's gonna take a photograph of more of the view you're seeing there now at the moment. So I have it set up, it's on its base ISO, which is ISO 64. It's on, its aperture is on F11 and the shutter speed is around 10 seconds because that's what's needed to balance out the image here at the moment with the light level inside in this room. Now, the one other thing I did is I set it up on a five second timer. So when I press the shutter button, it's gonna take five seconds before it takes the photograph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing here now and how you can take a ghost photograph of yourself at home. So I'm gonna press the shutter button, right? Move back here and wait. just get out of the way and I'm going to go over along here I might still be in frame but yeah and now we're going to come back and what that should do is if I can reach forward here and grab the camera uh, and just have a look and see and I'm going to pop this up on the screen too as well so you can see it so the first one the first photograph you're looking at the screen here now you can see me but you can see straight through me so I didn't actually stay in the frame for long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it again and we're gonna set it for longer. I probably counted to five a bit too quickly in my own head. So we're gonna try it again. So what I'm gonna do this time is gonna leave it till about eight seconds. As you can tell, my timing and my timing in seconds is actually shocking. <laughs> Let's have a look at those and see how they go. So as you can see, that did work out a bit stronger, but you could also see I did move during that shot. Now I'm trying to do a lot of things here. I'm trying to record a video, trying to remember what I'm supposed to say. So yes, I did make a bags of it, but this is just purely to show you the effect and what can be done. <laughs> what you can do, which is even cooler, is have two chairs there. Set your camera on a five second timer like I did, press your shutter button, run back to the first chair and sit in that chair for five seconds. Then quickly move off to the other chair for five seconds and throw your arm around the first chair. So when you look back at the photograph, there's you sitting in one chair and there's you sitting in the other chair with your arm around yourself. All done in one photograph. The only thing that's limiting you in photography is your own imagination. Long exposure photography is op gonna open the floodgates to your imagination. Do what you want with it and enjoy it. So did you find this video interesting? Did you try taking a go shot yourself? How did it work out for you? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching and see you out there.